Hello, dear people. Here we are again. I'm here with Dr. Artur Rakimov. My name is Volker Schmitz, and today we are going to discuss cystic fibrosis and its relation, its relation with breathing retraining, especially the Buteyko method. And yeah, dear Artur, dear Dr. Rakimov, can you tell us a little bit about the relations of the two? Yes, yeah, cystic fibrosis is a condition kind of considered to be purely genetic, but doctors and people themselves, like parents who help them, realize more and more that these people uh, can improve their life and have longer life if they apply lifestyle changes. Mm. So what known about cystic fibrosis, that life expectancy was very low, let's say like somewhere around 100 years ago, it was just few months or years, so mm -hmm. children would, young, would die very young. Mm -hmm. And the way how people knew about this condition from very, very long time ago, probably like from centuries ago, because it's a very small number of population who would have this genetically revealed, is that if you kiss a child, mm -hmm. you, would feel, uh, you would feel that the forehead of the child would be very salty, mm -hmm. because these people somehow we are not able to keep salt in their body. And so the skin would be salty, and that would indicate that this child kind of is doomed, is going to die. Mm. So later, during the last hundred years, when doctors started to analyze what is going on, we discovered that there is a mutation in uh, chemical, in moving of chemicals. So there are special iron pumps, yeah. which relate to sodium potassium and mm -hmm. some other. And what happens with them is that because of this mutation, we are not able to effectively transport ions between different compartments in the body. Yeah. Now, this pump is active transport pump, depends on how much oxygen is present there. Okay. So it's active transport, like there are many also in the digestive tract, and a um, similar type of active transport when there are certain ions taken by the body from the food chamber inside the bloodstream using active transport. Sure. So, People with cystic fibrosis, when they have this type of defect, what happens, there are two types of common abnormalities they develop, and I had students with cystic fibrosis who successfully recovered their health, their health and still stay healthy using breathing retraining. Mm -hmm. Why? Because this technique that I teach and which people need to practice, students need to practice, it actually increases body oxygen level and that helps the defective genetic factor to function kind of closer to the norm, depending actually on the level how well we recover. In terms of which systems of the body are going to suffer, there are two systems which suffer most in people with cystic fibrosis, that would be respiratory system, mm -hmm. because of the transport of ions. The mucus became too thick in mm -hmm. the airways, and because of that, because of too thick mu uh, mucus, we are going to become more prone to more respiratory infections. Oh. And the most common cause of death in people with cystic fibrosis would relate to respiratory failure because the respiratory system would have too much bacteria. Mm -hmm. So we accumulate this thick mucus which harbors path pathological bacteria which has, because of that, many respiratory infections take place in people with cystic fibrosis. That one kind of abnormalities which take place in these people. And other types of abnormalities relate to digestion and they have similar kind of physiological background. Yeah. So we have the same again defective mm -hmm. gene. And that causes inability to create a normal mucosal layer inside the digestive tract. So the digestive tract, the mucosal sur surface mucus becomes too thick. Mm -hmm. And that causes again abnormal appearance of too much bacteria, too much infection mm -hmm. in the digestive tract. So these two abnormalities again can be solved when people start to apply breathing retraining, in addition to standard medical techniques, because the medicine involvement and doctors use more and more methods, and let's say like somewhere around 50 years ago, the expectancy for cystic fibrosis was somewhere around 10, 15 years, then like a few decades ago, we were living around 25, 30 years, yeah. and now it's like somewhere around 40, 45 years, <clears throat> okay. the common life expectancy of a person with so I see fibrosis, it was a huge increase yeah. if you think about what was normal 100 years ago and now due to achievements of medicine and doctors may use, they may, they may use special drainage of lungs mm -hmm. for people with cystic fibrosis because they accumulate too much mucus. Mm -hmm. 
and we can provide medication for lungs, we can provide medication for the digestive system as well, digestive enzymes, which helps people with cystic fibrosis to function better. Mm -hmm. But the main problem, as Soviet Bodega doctor discovered in Russia, we call muscovidosis, which is like a totally different yeah. name as we use in Russia, but condition is the same. German, mucoviscidosis, like similar, the, yes. like Russian name. And what, what happens there, this doctor discovered that these people actually can have normal life expectancy and normal life if they manage to retrain their breath. Because the common pattern that we have in modern population that now, right now average person breathes about twice more than the medical norm that was established 100 years ago. So people now, if we think about again normal subjects, not people who have diseases, because with diseases people breathe even heavier. We have normal breathing.com form page, we have all these tables, historical mm -hmm. graph mm -hmm. charts, look which, which are good to look at for people with cystic fibrosis too, because they can realize that people actually uh, breathing too much air because it's cystic fibrosis as well, would have low CP, have, depending on the stage of the disease. So if we have ordinary people with cystic fibrosis would have around 15-20 seconds mm -hmm. for the body oxygen test. In case of uh, development, severe development of cystic fibrosis, when, when we already have complications with lungs and maybe digestive and some other abnormalities get like more and more serious, they would have 10 seconds or less for the body oxygen test. This, this body oxygen test has the a description uh, below if you want to, if you don't know what this is, we... Uh, All control possible. Yeah, control possible. Yeah. There are other videos. Which we it. measure in order to evaluate how much oxygen we have in tissues. So the normal level, 40 seconds according to Bottega, it should be 60 seconds. And people have around 20 seconds, people with cystic fibrosis would probably have around 20 seconds, many of them 15-20, but severe forms of uh, cystic fibrosis, last stages of cystic fibrosis would have 10 seconds or yes. less. Yes. That means very low oxygen due to too heavy breathing. Mm -hmm. So too heavy breathing destroys lungs more due to effect of uh, too low CO2 and the immune sure. system is very suppressed in addition to that effect. So. And because of that when we start breath retraining, we normalize the function of your immune system. But most importantly, I believe, particularly for them, we improve transport of ions, of active transport of ions, due to oxygen provided for these pumps for all tissues of the body. And that allows them to gradually reverse all these abnormalities that they develop. Mm -hmm. So when we achieve around 20 seconds plus 20 or more seconds for the body oxygen, that we start, we are able to go running. Okay. And one of my students, actually, like I remember one, one, one of my first student who recovered from cystic fibrosis, uh, she could run even with CP 15-20 seconds because, of course, these people knew already from early childhood that they have this condition. And they kind of get really uh, uh, conscientious about their lifestyle, doing physical exercise, thinking about their diet, because they realize for them it's a very important part of their life. And what happens with this student, was like she already could go, go right, go slim, with uh, around 15-17 seconds yeah. and breathe only through the nose, which is for me very surprising because yeah. people don't kind of usually are not able to go running with CP yeah. 15 seconds, seconds, yes, really hard. So, but uh, what I noticed with this student that later too, that people with cystic fibrosis recover slower in comparison to, let's say, if I have somebody with asthma or bronchitis or sinusitis, it's really smooth, depending yeah. on, sure, of course, unless people are very obese or, they are, or severely overweight or have like years of taking a lot of different types of medications that they recover slower. But generally, I know these people yeah, with cystic fibrosis need maybe, let's say, twice more efforts in terms of doing physical and breathing exercises, but they progress as well. They are able to progress as soon as they do the work. And when we slow down the breathing closer to the medical norm or up to the official medical norm, which is 35-40 uh, seconds, then we see the symptoms in the digestive and respiratory areas are reversed. And that is great news because the frequency of respiratory infection gets like down to nothing, zero. Mm -hmm. We don't get infections anymore. We're able to run with nose breathing. We can do a lot of exercise. The sleep quality is dramatically improved. Energy level is improved. Digestion, another huge factor again for them. We are able, if they follow, of course, standard protocol, medical protocol that doctors use, we are able to achieve no soiling as well. No soiling like means we don't need toilet paper, have clean gut, no presence of biofilms on the, mm -hmm. uh, on the, the 
mucosal lining of the small intestine that may be achieved this situation when pathogens are no more prevalent in the digestive system. So we don't require toilet paper and other symptoms like foul smell and digestive abnormalities. We also are possible to deal with using briefing pre-training. So briefing pre-training is again well known and Soviet doctors, we had hundreds of people who recovered from Muscovidosis, as we mm -hmm. call it in Russia, Tsaisi fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And now on the West, it started to kind of grow because among Buteka practitioners, there were also a lot of students, and I actually met some of them as well, who recovered by briefing retraining. Although what it requires here is most Buteka practitioners, since we never had themselves more than 30 seconds for the body oxygen test uh, in the morning, we do not teach the students how to get even higher numbers and that kind of a limit, a restriction, because people with size fibrosis would require need this higher value, need really good, yes, exactly, kind of the traditional, uh, original Soviet or Russian approach when the people <coughs> was was practice two hours per day of breathing exercise and doing two, three hours of physical exercise. The norm of Buteyko was even 60 seconds, not what, what we have as a yes. medical norm now, exactly. 40 seconds. Yes, to, to achieve 60 seconds should be the goal. I, I definitely believe for a person with cystic fibrosis in order to have really good life, uh, life quality and in order to reverse completely uh, all present symptoms. And that's also part of the book that I have on Amazon, Tsaisi Fibrosis Life Expectancy 30, 50, 70. Uh, like Tsaisi Fibrosis can be reversed, which is again experience not only of myself, but also of other Buddhaka practitioners. Uh, but it requires really high level of CPE, high level yeah. of briefing pre training to achieve in order to have this condition completely under control because even though this genetic abnormality is present, the human body is able to cope with it successfully. Mm -hmm. so that's a good news in relation to cystic fibrosis.